come to Old Faithful. Sometimes they accidentally get a little wet. Might be because of the geyser, might be because of the weather. But there was a time when you could come to Old Faithful and intentionally get wet. That's right, there used to be a hot swimming pool located here. The pool was built in 1914, and it was located just behind me on the bank of the Firehole River in that flat area there. The water for the pool came from Solitary Geyser, which is in the hills up above the geyser basin. It was actually fed down to the pool. Now, in 1933, the pool changed hands. It was expanded into a huge wooden structure. It could hold 135 people, and it even had a lifeguard tower that was 25 feet tall. As you can imagine, though, there were some changing perceptions about having this pool in this geyser basin, maybe some health concerns as well. And in 1951, the pool was closed and it was removed. But you can still see the site where it's located today, and its effects are still felt in the behavior of solitary geyser. That geyser, when the water level lowered, started having small eruptions every few minutes. And now, even though all of that material has been removed, all the piping is gone, the water levels come back up, solitary continues to have these small eruptions that weren't really present prior to the pool being installed. So that's the story of the Old Faithful swimming pool. Now let's talk about earthquake activity, ground deformation, and geyser eruptions that occurred over the course of the past month. It was a pretty quiet month in terms of earthquake activity in the Yellowstone region. The University of Utah seismograph stations located 62 earthquakes during May. As usual, most of them occurred in this band between Hebgen Lake and the north central part of Yellowstone National Park. Now that included a small swarm of 20 earthquakes just to the north of West Yellowstone, Montana. This swarm actually started in late April, but continued throughout the month, and it included the largest earthquake of the month, a magnitude 1.8. There were two other 1.8s in the park during the month, one in the southwest part of the park, and another between Shoshone Lake and West Thumb. So all in all, pretty quiet seismically during the month of May. Turning now to ground deformation, this is vertical deformation measured at the White Lake GPS station on the east side of the caldera. The entire plot spans the last two years, and each one of these blue dots is one day of data. Upward trends are uplift, and downward trends indicate subsidence. Since 2015, the caldera has been subsiding at a rate of a few centimeters, an inch or so per year. It's interrupted in the summer months by a pause or a little bit of uplift, and that's due to seasonal changes in groundwater and snowmelt conditions. Now, since September, October of last year, we've seen subsidence, but it looks like that's starting to flatten out. So we may be beginning to transition to our summertime pause or a little bit of uplift, which we see, of course, every year. And now looking at the tallest geyser in the world, Steamboat Geyser. This is temperature measured in the geyser's outflow channel. These high temperatures and rapid fluctuations are indicating minor eruptive activity of the geyser. That culminated on the early morning hours of May 30th with a major eruption. This is the third major eruption of 2024. Immediately afterwards, the geyser stopped erupting, not even minor activity, and we went down to background temperature changes. So Steamboat, still active, just experienced its third eruption of 2024. Well, that's the June 2024 update from the Yellowstone Volcano Observatory coming from Snowy Old Faithful. Now remember, if you enjoyed this video, please hit like and subscribe down below. And if you have any questions, drop us a line. Either email us at yvowebteam at usgs.gov or put a note in the comments down below. Well, until next month, stay safe and stay healthy. We will be back from Yellowstone in July. Bye-bye.